Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us John Voris, who is the founder of Authentic Systems. John, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Hey, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you today. We've got a topic that we really are uh, are gonna go deep on and it's really impactful because we're gonna be talking to parents of college-bound students and uh, really kind of help give the hidden key to what drives them. And boy, I think that if we can do that for some parents, you'll be really dropping some knowledge uh, uh, bombs and revelations on them. So I'm excited to talk about that, but give us a little bit of a background on yourself and then what led you to your firm Authentic Systems. Well, years ago, I tried uh, door-to-door cold call sales and, um, uh, while I was going to college, and uh, I was terrible at it. Uh, I was uh, fi- actually fired four times, and uh, I had to quit three times, and actually gave up on sales altogether. And then uh, I was forced into a situation years later uh, to take another sales job, but this was going to be wholesale. So it's much different. You, you have your customers are set, and they have the time and, and of course, the money uh, to buy. And so that was going to be different. But uh, when, uh, the day that I was going to start, he told me, he says, well, we had to file bankruptcy. You're going to have to go to cold call door-to-door sales instead of the wholesale that we had planned. So I'm looking at seven attempts and seven failures. So uh, what I learned is quite often someone will say things and it makes sense to you and then somebody else will give the same message in a different way and and you don't understand. You do, you don't. All depends on how it's said. And so I thought maybe the sales training that I've received is just not my style or whatever it might be. So what I decided to do was go to... um, uh, a psychologist in um, Europe because I, uh, I had a degree in philosophy. And so I read a lot of uh, uh, psychologists and, of course, philosophers, and uh, they discussed what communication is. So from that, I went out and I took uh, that information out in the field, and every day I was in door-to-door sales. I used uh, an aspect of that to see which worked, which didn't. And uh, it took me about uh, three months, and I found a pattern. Six months, I had a model. That model took me out 20 years. So I was door-to-door cold calling for 20 years, but I, all my information is derived from European sources. And from that, you developed a system that helps people discover the power that drives personality. And that has application in sales. That's wonderful. Um, and I just think that it's really interesting that when you know kind of like the hidden key to what drives personality, now that can be applied to so many places. So today we're talking about the hidden factor in the personality of your college-bound student. And when you discover what that hidden factor is, it really now illustrates their real driving force. So tell us a little bit about your work with college-bound students. Certainly. So all I really did is take what I learned in sales, and then when I retired, I turned it into a way to assess children uh, who are trying to decide what they want to do in life, and they don't have much experience. And um, I discovered that the human mind only has one need, and that's a perpetual need to express their authentic identity. And we all do it through uh, objects, people, and events. And so it sounds uh, very obvious, but it turns out to be extremely profound because it means that everything around you is a manifestation of who you are. So when I began assessing uh, uh, children between uh, 15 and 20, uh, I discovered that I was able to find their authentic identity and able to find what really drove their motivations in life that was not accessed by a normal personality profile test or um, achievement test, et cetera. And uh, so I, I took off from there, and uh, it worked out uh, very, very well. Uh, and so I can't now, here's, it. Uh, that's the let, me, let me ask you a quick question because um, 
I want to unpack that just a little teeny bit. I think that most parents would never dream of having a personality style test done for their uh, college bound student, but the ones that would do that, um, they're using the traditional um, assessments and you're saying that your discovery is taking it um, past that. And I would like to ask, have you worked with people that have gone through your assessment and said, you know, if you were to ask me what drives my personality, I would have no clue at all. But now this process and this assessment now has just opened up the doors for them to understand. And then that now is a catalyst for all kinds of wonderful benefits. Right, exactly. And you see, when you do a personality profile test, they have value. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. But uh, when you do a, a, a test like that, it, you're always f coming from the position of observing your behavior. It's a behavioral foundation. So it's, it's object it, it has to do with how you deal with things in the world, the effect that you are, not the cause, but the effect. And so behind all that, behind your personality, is that drive of who you are, your identity is being formed through the choices you make. And uh, it can't, I can't access that through the, the questionnaire um, because everything around you, again, resonates with who you are as, as an individual and it shows how you're developing over time because we're always developing into a unique person. So we're always finding what we don't like, what we do like, we repeat what we do like, and we start getting a pattern and that our, our identity is forming. And it never stops, but it's forming that way. Personality is how you express yourself. Uh, science is what you express. And um, authentic systems is the why you express what you do. And one of the results of discovering this with your college-bound student is what? You, you know, if you discover this and you come together and now here's this assessment, does that free up and open up aspects of a relationship that now they never would have dreamt of? And, and what are some of the benefits that way? So well, the benefit is, for example, uh, you can be a, uh, a wisdom person. Wisdom person is someone who just has insatiable curiosity. And uh, they could be theoretical. They could be technical. Uh, they can be detailed. They can be systematic. There's different kinds. And so what happens in school is we generally go for a major that is uh, offered to us or suggested to us by our parents and also uh, friends and the teachers. And we think it's just uh, you know, grab a dart and throw it at the board and, and we can be anything we want. That's true, but within the confines of who we are. So yeah. if you're a wisdom person, you have to be focused on uh, that, those type of careers, like being an attorney, being a doctor, a nurse, something like that. And, and really from a, you know, I don't know, the standpoint of really showing your actual care, compassion, love for uh, your child, if you're able to have this assessment uh, done so that they realize their true authentic identity and self. Number one, it would help open up the doors for the right uh, steps in the future. And yes, you know, you always hear the cliche, oh, well, my parents wanted me to be that doctor lawyer and I did, but I hated it. So I went off and I went to stand up comedy or whatever the case is. Well, if you're doing this at the young age of the, the college bound student age, you're really setting the stage for some really good decisions and not having to backtrack and not having to put them through turmoil of, you know, I don't like this major or I don't like this field of study. Have you um, had that experience come up before with clients in the past? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, in fact, the, there's a student that I, I uh, assessed just last week and the father wanted her to be an attorney. And uh, uh, when I went through the process, I always have an adult with me or on the phone. Uh, and uh, but we went through the process, and uh, she wanted to be a child psychologist. Huh. So the difference is huge because yeah. now he, he, can fo he can focus his money in the right direction. She will continue her major, and she'll have the energy and the, and the interest in doing so. She will be motivated to complete it, and it will also comply with who she is. Now, could she be an attorney? Well, sure, but would she be happy? Would she be successful? Would she feel like she's achieving anything? And that's the answer to that is no, compared to if, what if she yes. was a child psychologist. 
And so I've had I think that that um, you you speak of um, the concept of unhappiness occurs when this natural drive is unreasonably restricted. So to the example you just gave, what if she never went through your assessment and is like, OK, dad wants me to be the attorney, so I'm going to do that. But she feels restricted right in inside. And it's like, OK, I, I got got my law degree and yay, I'm practicing law. But her passion, um, she's never been able to then realize her full potential. And I would think that that is so liberating for both parent and child at that point. Absolutely. What also uh, my, my uh, clients tell me is they like the idea that a parent, see, a parent doesn't really want to be all that responsible for their child's future if it doesn't go right. So yeah. um, uh, that's a problem. And that's a lot of responsibility. There's some parents to say, you make your choices. I don't want anything to do with it. Um, and so what this does is enable them to pass off this responsibility in a sense. And, and because we're doing it all together, all of us see the whole transformation of uh, what she should be doing and what she should not be doing and making that comparison. And it's all happening at one time. And, and this gives that father or mother uh, a great relief because now I know but, my son or daughter is in the right direction. But yet... I mean, I agree with you 100%, but yet it's not passing off like, I don't care, just do what you want to do. Oh, no, it's no, passing no. off now with this guided, you know, running on the right uh, uh, train track kind of future because we did this together. We now have come together and aligned and we know that, you know, driving force, that authentic stuff. And now the feeling of passing it off from the parent, now the child is like, it's almost like that, you know, you see in the Olympics, you run the sprint and they hand the baton. It's like, okay, the parents are sprinting along with them, and then, boom, here's the baton, and they're like, okay, now go. And I think that that's a really neat aspect you just brought up. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what happens. And uh, the, also for the child, the child wants to appease the parents. And so they'll go along with the program, but uh, they do it just to, to, to appease, and that's all. And they really leave themselves, their inner sense of who they are, behind uh, they, their desires uh, are left behind. And it's really sad because later down the road, uh, they don't really enjoy that full sense of happiness. Have you ever found in working in this scenario that when this true kind of identity driving force comes out, that there's elements of that that the parents go, you know, it's really interesting, but that's kind of like one of my hidden and, and there's almost like a genetic connection. Obviously there is with parent and child anyway, but some of those desires and driving forces have some overlap in, and maybe they're like, well, I know I wish I had done this back in the day as well. So it really has some, some confirming benefit for the parents too. Oh, absolutely. So when we were together, uh, the, the parent is watching the answers and watching the uh, questions and seeing how they evolve. And they start thinking about themselves and when, when they were 16, 17 years old. And they're watching this. And there's, my God, I do the same thing. I have that same motivation. Et, et cetera. Now I know why she doesn't do math, because she's really not supposed to be a math expert. She's in a whole different world over here. She likes the theoretical instead of the, the concrete. And so she, and she said, oh, I did too. So actually, the parent discovers themselves in the child. And when they're done, then the child can see the same in the parents. But now the way this works is it's in form only, not content. So uh, let's say uh, the uh, father is uh, a wisdom person as well. All that means is that they're just very curious. And so here's a daughter who's very curious. But with that comes a lot of ramifications that you can uh, uh, see in each other, and they could actually share because, you know, for every positive, there could be a little negative, and, they, and the father can explain how to get around that. The father can yeah. now see himself, and that's a big guide. Yeah, and, and it would help even communication and interaction in non-college related things like we're talking about. But I would suspect that if they then realize that their um, child is very inquisitive and curious, then in some the next interaction or maybe even a possible conflict, maybe it might be, well, you know what? Here's what I think, but here's what I would like you to do. Go and investigate, do some research and do some online thing and come back and show me whatever. It might even be 
whatever per, on the personal side and maybe that just clicks for the child and they're like yeah i will and then now they come alongside and and it's really a, a vibrant communication as opposed to don't do this do this oh absolutely I, in fact i've done whole families that's that's a lot of fun uh, yeah all the all the family knows each other what really drives them what makes each other happy what uh, uh the best way to learn uh, how do they like to socialize and the issues they don't like and uh, what they like to produce? What, what do they want to generate in life and give it purpose? So they end up learning each other's uh, meaning, the meaning that we have for life, their meaning and their purpose, and uh, their relationships with each other. They learn why they're there. And so you give an example. If you have a, a love-driven person, uh, a power person is almost their enemy. Uh, they really have a tough time. And so uh, this is why some people say, uh, you know, he just walked in the room and I looked at him and I said, I don't know, I just didn't have a, a funny feeling about it. And so this is what happens is that the, the, the issues are between the archetypes, the life things. The life things are at issue. And it's the person has that life thing. So I, when I do couples, uh, it's really a discussion between the different life themes are causing the conflict, and they yeah. own the, the life themes. And it makes it very different because now it's objective. It's not about me. It's about this life theme that I inherited from my parents. And so now and, it's And when you can observe that and shine a light on that between parent and child, and now you know that within the family, before they even came to you, there were some conflict or you know confusion even over what major what school when you know should I stay at home should I go out you know where where do you go to school so I would suspect that this assessment uh, brings so much clarity to the fact that now when they come back together and talk about those same topics majors and things now they are either enlightened enough to go we already know some of these answers but also on the ones that they have to work through, they're communicating and working through them better. And I would think that maybe even they're coming back to you later going, this became so easy because this assessment showed me exactly how we com- need to communicate and what drives each, each one of the sides. Oh, exactly. And uh, in fact, I have a lot of my clients are um, consultants themselves, and uh, they've had uh, difficulty with your standard personality profile test. And so what I do is when I go through that process and they would have a child, say, 17, 18 years old, and they would go through that whole process and they actually see the inner workings of the child and what, it, what in a sense, were they designed to do? What was their real destiny beneath all yeah. of it? And that, it's not a fixed thing. It's a direction. And, and they, they understand it now. And that yeah. makes a big difference. They don't and maybe the parent mistakes. then comes off of, I want you to be a doctor, lawyer. Maybe they're like, well, now that I see that you know, driving force, well, maybe it's not an actual doctor, but maybe you could be a, something else in healthcare and still fulfill some of those. And maybe that really helps them to go, I don't, you know, don't want to push my child because of something I feel. It gives that third party affirmation. So I just think that that is such a really neat Uh, revelation, that assessment that you do. Let's wrap up with this, John. Um, If someone is listening to this and feeling like, I would love to see how this could benefit, you know, my family so that my college-bound student could really have some good clarity, what's the best way that someone could reach out and connect with you and learn more? First, go to uh, johnboris.com. Uh, and there's my website, and you can prove that. Um, also, you can get a hold of me directly on the email, uh, john at authentic-systems.com. Excellent. So I will make sure to include your website into the show notes so that people can reach out to you. I just think this is such an exciting realm of uh, assessment and uh, 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 co- creating communication clarity. So I think that is so neat that you're doing that. It was really wonderful talking with you. Thanks for coming on today. Oh, well, thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.